So I'm now going to move on to talk about the monarchy, uh, the United Monarchy. So according to the biblical record, Israelites chose Saul to be the first king uh, in 1020 BCE. And then later we'd have David. Uh, Saul and David are famous uh, kings um, in biblical history. And uh, David's son, Solomon, is also uh, famous. Um, how many people are named David? A lot, right? Saul, we do see people named Saul and Solomon, but definitely David the most, uh, a really common name. Um, and he becomes a king hero, not unlike Gilgamesh somewhat, in the sense that David does a lot of bad things. In fact, Saul does a lot of bad things. Solomon does a lot of bad things, and yet there also are heroes. And they do extremely bad things. David even has a loyal soldier killed so that he can take his wife, even though he has many, many wives and concubines himself. And God punishes him for that. But lo and behold, he's one of our greatest heroes, and so many of us are named after him. My cousin's named David. I'm sure somebody, uh, I'm sure everyone knows someone named David. And so... Um, it's, you know, that's interesting. So from this time period, uh, we're, there is basically outside the Bible, no ancient text to bear witness to this united monarchy, though. And again, this is the problem. So the Bible really tells a believable story. You know, you, you just got to admit that if you read the, the story, um, the characters really come alive and... It reads like literal history. It could be literal history. And in fact, the book points out that mainstream scholarship, in this case, does believe that it did exist. But there are some that even doubt if David existed, mainly because of the lack of sources outside to confirm the existence of uh, this time period. And so... Um, what we see is in this map uh, um, showing, and uh, there's other maps that might even be better, uh, of the territory that would have been absorbed into um, the United Kingdom. This is essentially what um, modern Israel wants to aspire to, looking back historically, um, at the expense of Palestinians now. Um, but uh, again, the this, this story of this time period is very important. And, um, you know, I think there's a lot of scholars that, while they believe in this united monarchy, they still seem to be skeptical of the biblical story that's told, okay? And so you just, you just need to be aware of that. You can believe whatever you want. Okay, so I just kind of want to go break this down a little bit better. So King David, so he expands Judah to take over the north, and he unites all the Israelite tribes. And Jerusalem is a capital uh, that's made, and um, that's fundamental to Jewish nationalism. Um, in Arabic, the Palestinians call Jerusalem Al-Quds, Al-Quds, the Holy Land. And uh, Yerushalam, uh, uh, Jerusalem is the, considered the capital of Israel now, but it's the Palestinians also believe it's important, and so it's a contentious place now. So while I mentioned that the ancient conflict doesn't have a lot to do with the modern, um, there are certain things that do get incorporated into the modern conflict from the past that are, are relevant, but not for the entire conflict. Jerusalem is a touchy subject. That one um, gets touchy. Okay, but it's still not linked back to this time, except in the case of Jews claiming that as their capital. Okay, um, now um, King David is believed to have written much of the Psalms of the Bible. Okay, that's important to know, and um, he is considered a famous poet as well. Many of the Psalms that you might have heard, um, Psalms twenty-three. Um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, are attributed to King David. Um, and again, he may or may not have written them, according to scholarship. Now, real quick, I want to explain something. Um, that 
Israel is the name of uh, a head of a tribal leader and he ends up having descendants and they become the 12 tribes of Israel that come out of him and he has a name change as well but Israel is what his name means uh, is, is what he becomes so Israel in the Bible refers to tribes that come together and it's the term used for God's people and then it refers to this United Kingdom all uh, of, of Israel and later it's going to get confusing because Israel is going to be considered the northern part and Judah the, the, the southern part it's confusing and um, you still may be kind of lost there um, please get back to me on that if you want more clarification on this um, so King Solomon then uh, is the next famous important king in the Bible uh, uh, from this time period he builds the temple to Yahweh in Jerusalem um, in the 10th century and he is legendary for being wise and uh, the book of Ecclesiastes Koheleth it's in Hebrew um, some of the Proverbs and the Song of Songs. Song of Songs is an erotic love poem. I encourage you to read it, especially chapter seven. You will, if you haven't, you'll be surprised at the um, eroticism that's there. Um, Ecclesiastes has that, uh, the lyrics to the song, I think it was the birds, there's a season, turn, turn. There's a time to, to build and refrain and all that kind of stuff. If you remember that song, that comes from Ecclesiastes. Modern scholars do not believe that King Solomon wrote Ecclesiastes, by the way. Uh, uh, almost no one, I think, does. But it has been traditionally attributed to him. Okay? And um, and, and like I said, so forth, the, the Proverbs and the Song of Songs. Um, this empire, though, is going to break up shortly after. So this biblical story goes and appears in history. And the reason is, is that people are exhausted. The temple is built at a high cost. So, I mean, the story of the Bible goes, essentially, that while Solomon, in Hebrew, his name is Shlomo, and it comes from sh uh, Shalom, his name means peace, and he was, uh, it was meant to be a, a kind of apex uh, of, of uh, um, ancient Israelite rule, ancient Israel's uh, um, civilization, the story is that the people were heavily taxed and burdened and essentially this kingdom is not sustainable and immediately falls apart. The smaller part is broken up and made into a two tri the two-tribe kingdom of Judah and then we have the northern Israel and that's where it gets confusing, right? So Judah, they would be a part of the Israeli tribe but now they're being called judah not israel so they're now we're separating into two different nation states okay and so that can be obviously quite confusing um but that's how that's working out all right so what ends up happening is that assyria as we talked about a major player in here uh, becomes angered through for the various reasons that are talked about in the book and it becomes destroyed in the eighth century and it's wiped out um, and these ten tribes basically disappear there becomes all sorts of, by the way there's a, a theory that some whites have that someone wrote that the people who settled the land of the British Isles are actually the lost tribes of Israel so whites from Britain are actually the true Israelites um, I believe correct me if I'm wrong I think that uh, Mormons believe that the uh, Native Americans uh, here on this continent are the lost tribes of Israel. Um, so we, we have many, many uh, uh, different legends and ideas about um, what happened to them. Essentially, they do fade. What's not talked about in the book, um, there does emerge from the North a religion called Samaritans. The Samaritans and the religion of Samar Samar the Samaritans believe that they are uh, Israelites. Um, I will send you a, um, a YouTube later to show you. There's only like 600 still left. Okay, um, it's very interesting. Um, but that's another topic. Um, so then Babylon eventually takes down Judah. In the 6th century, uh, this, this temple 
is destroyed. Okay, so that's the first temple. And Judean elites are taken captive into Babylon. And so here's what's fundamental. Again, I know we covered a lot. It's a lot of overwhelming information. Um, essentially, for um, that it's in this time period that things really start to set in motion. I'm going to give one more lecture and kind of sum things up. I'm really, there's so many things I want to cover and I'm leaving out a lot of details. And uh, I'm giving you the kind of main meat to, to try to help you, especially follow along as we go later into other chapters and we return back to themes that come out of Judaism into Western civilization. Um, but uh, uh, I will always talk more in detail about anything that you question or, or want to go over. Okay, all right, so I'm here.